The objective of a teacher is to retain, is to teach, to get the students to retain information and the skill, use the information skill, and increase production because of the information skill. Our style at Ohio State. Number one is going to be clear, organized, clear objective. I'll challenge our coaches nonstop. My job, one, even after my year, my year away, even is more clear in my mind after visiting with other coaches around the country and seeing these top shelf programs. My job is to be very, to make sure that coach is very clear. Once again, it's this or it's this. What are you asking that kid to do? And is he getting it done? So be very clear. There has to be an objective in what you're asking him to do, or don't do it. Don't do it. Next. Clean. The use of tools, tip sheets, and videos. The, time, the days of the, the old coach I've had that we've had to all improve as coaches. Uh, the greatest teaching tools available in the history of the sport are now available to you. It's called video, digital video, video uh, cut-ups, all the other these, these great ways of teaching. The days of saying, I don't use that, are not acceptable at the Ohio State University. We're going to be on the cutting edge of every teach tool that's available. It has to be very clean. clean. The days of the scribbled tip sheets where the kids can't read them, that uh, no longer exists. Concise, broken down to the smallest detail and get to the point. And then this is what makes us, I'm hoping makes us different, uh, or, or separates a lot of the great teachers from not, it's the direct teaching. For example, if I ask you, can you name the four components of our, the way we expect people to teach at the Ohio State University, can you? Can you see? Well, not the very few. I'm trying to create an environment of on edge. I want you on the edge of your seat, kind of worried you're going to get called on. That forces what? Stimulation of the brain. So direct teaching is this. What is it? What are the four parts? Clear, clean, concise, and direct. Okay, what are they again? Don't cheat. Don't look your ass at the board. What is it? That makes you sit in your chair and you start to get uh, nervous about the coach is going to ask you a question. For the coach who gets on the board and sit and draws circles and teaches the board all day, and also in the back row, say, now what the hell's that? There's no teaching going on. There's presenting, it's not teaching. The difference between a teacher and a presenter is this. My sister's the provost, University of Cincinnati. This is a great Christmas argument we've had for 20 years. I say, you're a presenter. She said, no, I'm a teacher. You're a presenter. Presenters present information and they fail people if you don't get it. Does that make sense? So if I give you information, you don't get it, I give you an F. In our profession, that's one of these. We get an F, there's a new staff from rolling in here. So we don't present, we teach. Teach means exhaust all possible venues or, or, or resources to make sure the player knows what he's doing. For example, 2006, uh, Chris Sleek was our quarterback in Florida. Was a guy that was non-functional, had learning disabilities. We had a lot of issues with him. We get down there, he's one of those seven and five quarterbacks, seven and six, seven and five, two of the prettiest pass I've ever seen, had pretty blue eyes, the whole deal. Couldn't learn. They couldn't learn. So their whole offense was uh, the, they look at the sideline, get the play, he wouldn't even call the play, clap his hands, went out to talk, went everything. And my question is why? Say he can't learn. Throws a very beautiful pass, he just can't learn. Dan Mullen by his quarterback coach. We knew that there was, we looked at behind him, there was not another quarterback, or it would have made a change. And this kid was tough. Mickey Marotti, our strength coach, said he's one of the toughest guys on the team. He's got it. Okay, let's be creative as a coach. We're not a presenter. That kid has to learn. Let's bring in four to get all the Let's bring in three specialists. Okay, let's ask that, let's ask, why is this kid not learning? Well, we found out after about six months just grinding these learning specialists, over and over again, and doing all this research on the kid, the kids that, uh, sees it, was that dyslexic? Sees it backwards, he has a very severe learning disability, he's the toughest guy there is, he works hard anybody else, that's how he made it through school, but he can't learn from the board. I'm proud to say after 05, it took us a while to figure that thing out, the kid wins a national championship in 2006 because our meetings now went from the classroom to on the field. It was all motor learning, the kid learned fine. He's fine, he's a great learner. He doesn't learn like maybe you and you and I do. So that's the difference. How many how many professors understand that? How many people go to that deep of six months of just studying, trying to this one kid has to learn what we're teaching him? We can't accept the fact that he's uh, not able to learn on the on the chalkboard. Atmosphere, clean, organized environment, desk. Uh, this is something that I'm very nuts about. Desk with notebook and pencil, not pen, both feet on the ground, no hoods or hats, no cell phones, obviously. On time, take a break. 
This is something every year we're going to do, I think, uh, before spring practice, we're going to have learning specialists come in and visit with our staff. And what I've learned over the years, I used to think a kid was dumb. Uh, I would say that. I would say, move on. We have to get someone else ready to go instead of really doing a good job of saying that kid is not dumb. That, kid, that kid's fine. The coach is dumb. Because the coach sits in a 45-minute meeting, meeting without a break, and after about 15 minutes, you lose that kid. So every year, we try to coach our coaches on how to create the supreme, perfect teaching environment in the classroom. Once again, some are this, some are this. I've had this, for most part of my coaches are this. Because you can see it on the film, you sit, I get to sit in that meeting and walk out of there, I feel like a million bucks saying, that's a coach, I got one. I got one in nine, I'm gonna go find out this guy. Can this guy teach? Okay, no, I don't care if he looks good and, and he says all the right things. At the end of the day, is there direct teaching going on? Once again, the most important component of our teaching is direct. What did I just say to you? If the kid can spit it back to you, you got a chance. If he can't, you just caught yourself. You wasted a lot of time. I'll ask the kids nonstop. We'll sit in the meeting, we'll be walking out to the practice field, and I'll say, now when your coach is in there talking about that, if he looks at me like I got five heads, it's not the kid's fault. It's the, I would call it the presenter's fault. He didn't teach. We just wasted 45 minutes. He didn't teach. So I go back to that coach and let's evaluate the way you're teaching. Your guys aren't playing real good. You told me you're going to hold the ball. I didn't tie wrist above the elbow and you're going to elbow lock it. For some reason, coach, your guys are not doing that. And it's not acceptable to say that effing kid. No, that's the whoa, whoa, whoa. That effing coach. That's your job. That's your responsibility. If that kid gets spinning back at you. Also, I, uh, Bill Belichick and I, every year comes down, we spend time together. He always wants to talk about NP pass protection. He's just a football nut. I always ask him, how do you know your team's ready? That's my question to him over and over again. It'll be right in our team meeting room, the special team meeting room, your special. It's going to be when your team knows what they're doing, but more importantly, why they're doing it. Think about what I just said. That's profound now. Not only what they're doing, well, I'm going to block the B gap. I'm going to block, I'm on offense line, I'm going to block the B gap. On the tackle, I'll block the B gap and backside back, whatever that move. Why are you doing that? Because it's a gap scheme. We're trying to wash everything down, kick out, and hit an A gap uh, power. I'm just giving an example. If he knows why you're doing a big picture teaching, you have a better chance of that guy achieving or getting his job done because he understands uh, the, the, the big picture. So once again, when is your team ready to go? When they know what they're doing, but what, more importantly, why they're doing it. Now I'm gonna stimulate your thoughts a little bit. How do you know that a kid knows why he's doing it? Ask him, stand his ass up. Give him a chuck, give him a marker and say, get up to the board and show us why we're doing this. You talk about stimulating a meeting room, stimulating a teaching environment. The great ones I've been around are as good as I've ever seen in doing that. I've had others that are very average at it. Direct teaching is the most important component to get it up to create a learning environment. Full engagement, direct teaching, which we talked about. Teacher moves around the room. I don't want to coach. Uh, I had to talk to a couple of them where they sit their fat ass in the back of the room and they watch videotape. That, that will not exist. You know, say, You're going to see this constant movement, constant talking. Do you understand what I'm talking about right here? We have to get this done. We have to get this done. Do you understand? Here's the truck and the guy's coaching moving around. Those are the best teachers I've been around. Bottom line, every action, you've heard this before, I think it's a great statement, every action either taught or allowed, good and bad. Teacher, present, test, functionality. That's how I evaluate the teachers. Are they, do they present, do they test the kids on it, which is direct teaching, and the functionality of the young man doing his job. Presenters first present, hope it all, uh, presenter hopes it all works out. Teachers uh, obviously make sure it works out. Teaching objective, get the student to retain information and ability to use it. Teaching environment. Students need stimulation. On edge is our style. So you as a coach, hopefully you're sitting there. I apologize if you're now we're going to talk about spread off, which is something that I um, here's what I tell you about for myself. If what you're doing is working, if you're really proud of what you do, when you when you are the linebacker coach at Ohio State, you push play. That self bitch doesn't have wasted movement. He's in a football position. He's a great tackler because he closes grass, accelerates through, puts his hand across the ball, wraps up, buys up football. All the things important for the linebacker to play. If he does that, carry on, move forward, and keep enhancing who you are. If what you push play doesn't, it doesn't, it's not what you're teaching, you have to blow the whole thing up. Don't wait. Something's not right. And that's where you gotta take the ego, put it aside and say, no, wait a minute, that's not working. It's not the kid. You'll never hear in our staff room, I better never hear that. That damn kid didn't do this. 
That damn kid didn't do this. Stop it. Ooh. That kid better start doing that. Because you're a teacher. You're not a presenter. And that's where the pressure gets on that coach. Once again, on-edge teaching and on-edge coaching. Like this is, this is uh, Stephen Dodge, a great friend of mine, who's now the head coach at Temple. So I bring, uh, I think it was Tim Beckman. Tim Beckman and I, my first get hired for here, we're going to put in the punt. Punt formation. It's not the spread punt we use now, it's the traditional punt. We vertical set, kick back, three kicks, and press out, no deal. So just tell you this real quick story. Content, of what a kid learns, the content's 20%. You're going to get, I mean, it's 20%. How do you get that into someone's mind is more importantly. It's the delivery, it's the passion, it's the guy moving around, it's the teaching tools, it's the ability after 15 minutes to get them up, stretch, wake them up, tell a joke, whatever, get stimulate that, stimulate the teaching environment. Sit in a warm room, guys sit in the back of the room and some coach up there teaching his ass off and no one's paying attention, that's called presenting. Stephen Dodds, when we go visit him at Notre Dame, so see where the friend of your punt. I mean, the best I've ever heard teaching punt. We don't do it anymore, but it's, I mean, he's the best I've ever heard teaching. Okay, he wants a vertical kick, and I forget which hand he put up. It really didn't matter. Tim Beckman says, well, coach, we did it this way. And Steve's like, I don't give a shit which way you did it. This is the way we do it. I'm on a Saturday morning. I'm with my family. I'm spending time with you. Here's the way we do it. It works. And he's showing us. And Tim, you know, Tim's a, a great football coach, very persistent. He said, but, but coach, we do it this way, don't you think? And finally, he puts his glass and I says, listen. He said, I don't give a shit the way you do it. This is the way we do it. It worked. And I mean, I started going after him a little bit. I was like, sit back and going, I don't really care which hand you punch with. My point is this. It's the delivery of that message. Guess which way we did it? The way that the guy took it. You know, he's so passionate about it. So my point is this. It's not just the content. It's not slipping. Uh, Alex Smith told me one of the things, the quarterback of the Niners. His biggest frustration with the 49ers for so many years was they would take a big book out. The West Coast, Bill, there's Bill Walsh right on top of it. So Bill Walsh, they open it up, slide out an overlay, put it on and say, now we need to do this. And he's used, he wasn't used to that. See, Dan Mullen was his coach. Dan Mullen was passionate about this is what we're going to do, why we're going to do it, direct teaching and get it done. He needs to be taught like that. So it's not just the content. It was the content. Everybody do the same stuff. It's the delivery, the passion, the way that coach moves around the teaching environment. In that room is what's the difference. So what, Coach Meyer, what have you gained over the last 10 years of being a head football coach? The spread off the shovel pass? No. No. The ability to watch the greatest teachers, maybe in the history of the game, can teach. And I can go through their mind names. I have 11 guys that are, I've told you this, 11 guys that are head coaches. Why? Because of the spread offense, because of 4 3 versus 3 4, or sometimes they play quarter, sometimes they sky, sometimes they cloud. You know, everyone's going to win a quarter blitz. Okay? Is it because of that shit? No, it's because of the passion with which they teach. And it's because I am so committed. Not to the spread offense. I don't care what we run. I really don't. I kind of like it, especially with Braxton Miller. But what I am committed to is making sure that your young football player steps in the media room, it's intense. I mean, it's on edge. I don't want him sitting back in a chair like this. I don't want his feet on the table because there's going to be an eraser come flying at you if I see that. It's a guy sitting on edge, absorbing everything. And after about 15 minutes, you shake it off, get a rinse, coach that, has some fun with him, and you're at it again. You'll see production on the field. Once again, it's evaluation friendly. What's that mean? It's either that or it's that. At Ohio State, that is not acceptable. It has to be that. But coach, that, that, that's it. If not, get rid of that play. We can't do it then. I don't want to hear about what you used to do with this school and all that. At the end of the day, can your guy do that? If he can, move forward, enhance. If not, blow the whole thing up.